everybody welcome back to my channel if you are someone who enjoys talking about movies how about clicking that subscribe button so it's that time of the month again you guys time to rank the movies that i saw in the month of june let's go ahead and get on with these rankings and for my returning viewers because if you are new this whole tier list here is new for you guys you have a new category called really and as you can tell from the first movie on my list 365 days that is where that movie's gonna go now i did not absolutely despise and hate this movie like a lot of people are um i did see a lot of reviews on it i was going to review it and i had actually put a poll up on my instagram on if i should do a solo review or wait for this monthly one the monthly one is the one that won um probably because they didn't want to hear me talking about this this movie or who knows but anyway it goes that one won and so you know i may linger on this one just a tad bit it was trending on the top 10 for netflix i don't know if it is still on there but it was trending i think it was number one for a long time 365 days is based off of a book it's actually a trilogy so if you are somebody who saw you despise it just be pre-warned in case you did not know you're gonna get two more movies now this does get compared a lot to 50 shades of gray do say how this movie makes 50 shades look good i liked 50 shades of gray you guys i'm not even going to lie to you guys i really enjoyed it i enjoyed the books i enjoyed the movies and i get where people are disliking it whatever but i mean everybody has their own like sexual like fantasies and stuff so like if they want to go and be freaky let them be freaky she, you know um who's to judge you know you do you sweetie you do you now this over here in this movie now this is just straight up kidnapping you guys and it's straight up like assault and i mean ultimately it's the whole stockholm syndrome deal and this girl like spoiler alert you guys you yeah, know when i do my um rankings i do spoiler alert. if you're new here i do spoiler stuff when i do these rankings now uh laura basically fell for this guy like in a month I don't even know if it was that long she fell for him very quickly constantly talking about i'm not gonna touch you i'm not gonna hurt you unless you ask me to but then there he goes like grabbing her neck and like all up in her personal space groping her in all her areas kidnapping her again and taking her on a plane trip and like groping her some more there's just so much wrong with the movie i get it i know that i should hate it but maybe because i wasn't really like involved with the movie i did absolutely because i mean there's movies that i just absolutely despise and i'm just like no this one i'm just like mm. you know i it's like i saw it and then i kind of forgot about it and then i had to remember again what was going on for this particular video for this to be compared to 50 shades i don't really get it because christian never actually kidnapped um anastasia you know in this case he actually kidnapped her and was like i'm gonna um i'm gonna keep you here hostage for a year that's why it's called 365 days because i want you to fall in love with me and this guy you guys is literally obsessed with this girl like he literally has paintings of her the whole part where i'm gonna show you what you're missing and like has her tied up and then this enters this random girl instead of me seeing you screw this girl's brains out you're forcing me to watch this girl give you head no thank you okay that girl go you know do, you do you sweetie but i don't know what the hell i'm missing with that like i i, I really don't you know what let me let, let's let's move on you guys let, let's move on because this is not a 365 day review and i know i kind of almost made it into that but the script also you guys i know i said i was gonna move on but the script was horrible like i think a porn you guys is way better like if you want to just the whole sex scene you guys i mean they were like just screwing all over the boat but it almost was like a houdini act in a way because at the beginning of the movie where he would just kind of like appear and disappear in like parts it's like are you doing like a little houdini act and it's like they're just like screwing in all parts of the boat it's i don't, I don't know you guys just watch porn if you want to watch like you know the storyline in the porn is probably way better than this for real it's time to move on to 7500 or 7500 however you want to call it in the movie he calls it 7500 which is the code for hijacking this is a prime original and it stars joseph gordon levitt um it was an okay um movie you guys so i know that i ended up bringing it a medium popcorn but i think i should have given it a small to be honest with you i think when i did my review i said medium and then i said small and i don't know the medium ended up making it into the video for some reason i guess deep down i enjoyed it more than i thought 
Um, we are just uh, taking place in the cockpit. And I was intense in certain moments. Was it a wonderful movie overall? No. Was it a unique movie? No. It is a hijacking movie. We've seen stuff like this in a way because like I said in the review, it we're just in the cockpit we don't know what's going on with the passengers i mean we hear them and we are very limited on what we're seeing from the passengers it wasn't great but it wasn't terrible um i i would recommend it you guys especially if you are a joseph gordon levitt fan um i don't think you should miss out on this movie because who knows when the next uh, movie he's gonna come out with now, up next would be a whisker away which is my first anime movie and i actually really enjoyed it i mean I'm, well, i enjoyed it but i'm gonna put it under good now as a reminder you guys i don't watch anime i've only seen maybe like three to four anime series and as far as movies this is technically my second one if you include a Pokemon movie from like the 90s when I was a kid. So I really don't have anything to compare it to. So for me, this movie was really good. I like the concept of this girl turning into a cat to go, you know, be with her crush and get to know him a little bit better. And I also digged the whole concept of kind of making a deal with the devil. In this case was making a deal with the mask seller for your body or for your human life to become a cat. Animation I thought was beautiful. Let's go ahead and move on to Becky, which honestly a lot of people are gonna be like, seriously? Yes, seriously. Honestly, it's one of my favorite movies of 2020. It's exactly the type of movie that I like, I enjoy. It's full of like blood and guts and like a little kick-ass girl who's like murdering everybody we have kevin james in here we got the king of queens you guys here and he is a freaking nazi killer like this is like his first dramatic serious role and he escapes prison with his like little nazi gang and they go to this lake house which is owned by you know becky's family and man they picked the wrong weekend you guys to to head over to to the lake house they, they really did, but they, they fucked with the wrong girl, the wrong time, you guys, because, like, I mean, she was already having a shitty day, you know, and, like, a shitty year or, you know, however long it was because the mama died from cancer. The dad moved on so quickly, mind you. He said that the mama was the love of his life, but it seems like under a year, you found a new love of your life, plus you're getting married, and you decide to tell her that same day you go to the lake house, so she was already pissed off. And then you go and you kill her dog oh my god they kill the dog here you guys y'all can talk crap about me i don't care i haven't seen where i'm about to put the five bloods uh don't leave me you guys do not leave me me you guys the five bloods was just enjoyable and this is why i did not do a review on this movie was because everybody that i was seeing loved this movie and had so much great things to say about this movie and i was just like i'm not feeling that love that everybody else is feeling for this movie so i really didn't want to get like a lot of hate for it and now this is where I'm putting it and and I can't believe it came right after Becky and I know a lot of you are like I just can't with you I know but please stay with me Spike Lee is a genius he really is I do enjoy his movies I don't love his movies but I do enjoy them um last year he came out with the Black Klansman I actually like that movie better than the five bloods i mean this movie came out perfectly with with everything that's going on right now in society um he uses like he did in uh the black clansman actual um uh, black clansman did i say that right um he actually uses footage of real situations that happened throughout uh the vietnam war i'm sure you've heard this a lot from other reviews the cast was great now, if Delroy Lindo, you guys, does not get nominated for an Oscar, people are going to go berserk, you guys, because there's no way in hell this man does not deserve to get nominated. And at this point, to win, because, I mean, there's really, has, I mean, there really hasn't been any, as of right now, performances, I feel, to his level. Um, regardless if it's a lead actor or supporting actor where he would get nominated, I really don't know. I do think the movie was just a tad bit too long. I think uh, Spike Lee could have cut back maybe like 15 or 20 minutes from the movie. But I mean, once we get to that like explosion, 
yeah I know what I'm talking about um it, it really got it, it from there it kind of really picked up because the first part of the movie is pretty dull for me in my opinion um I think it was up until that explosion that happened um when everything kind of really picked up and started moving and was more entertaining for me going back to retrieve some gold that they hid when they were in vietnam back in their youth and then also to go find and bring back their fallen uh comrade um one thing that i did find kind of interesting and i honestly wish they had not done it this way i it was that when we do um this movie takes place in present time and in the past now at first i was a little bit confused because I, I didn't really get it that we were in the past because when we are in the past you guys if you haven't seen the movie they're played by the same characters um chadwick boseman he is the fallen comrade whose body they're trying to go and recover and bring back to the states so just kind of look out that when he's around they're technically supposed to be the younger versions because spike decided not to use younger actors to portray them for the youth or use the de aging technology like what they did in the irishman now up next is eurovision song contest the story of fire saga this one was you tried i try not to be mean you guys I just review this i'm not gonna go too much into it i just i didn't find it funny at all i love rachel mcadams so i had higher expectations for this movie i was really hoping that um she could have saved the day but unfortunately it fell very short um not memorable and that's all i'm gonna say because i just did the review on it so let's go ahead and move on to feel the beat and feel the beat was enjoyable as well that is one um uh, that actually i was very surprised to be honest with you how much i enjoyed it because i really thought it was gonna be super cheesy i was like no no this is not gonna be good and it really proved me wrong it i mean it still has its cheesiness to it but it's not as cheesy as i thought it was going to be nothing really new to this kind of genre of course we can't have a movie like this without some sort of romance going on and brewing around here and i really like that we didn't get uh bombarded uh with the love story so moving on to a lost bullet that is a french mauve and this one is just forgettable honestly you guys the lead in this movie really gave me jason statham vibes and low-key i feel like this is a movie that jason statham would have been in not only did he remind me of jason statham but the movie itself also reminded me of running scared with paul walker in this case they're looking for the bullet or well, they're looking for a car that has a bullet to uh clear his name it's about crooked cops and drugs i think or money i i don't really know you guys i literally just saw this movie um this weekend and i i, I forgot about it but the next movie you guys is very memorable nobody knows i'm here that to me was also wow it is it is a Spanish movie with subtitles and it stars Jorge Garcia who you may know him from Loss. He played Hurley. Um, that's actually one of my favorite TV uh, series, and I'm actually rewatching it right now. Uh, but other than Loss, I really hadn't seen him in anything. Well, mind you, that shitty ass movie, uh, The Wrong Missy, which he was also on the plane, which I thought it was pretty funny. He had like a very small role, but here he is the lead, you guys. I don't know if he's ever played the lead role before. I'm gonna re pre warn you right now, you guys. It is not a movie for everybody. It is very very depressing but it is such a beautiful 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 movie you guys it has some really really beautiful shots it is a very great tone kind of movie we do get a few flashbacks the way that i interpret it losing your voice because as an adult he really doesn't talk much you guys and that all really has to do because of the trauma and the psychological deals that happened to him as a kid and i know i may be going a little bit too into it as a kid um he was a singer and he had the most beautiful voice he was amazing amazing singer but he did not have the look that would sell the the producers were like 
I like his voice, but I only want his voice. So basically they just hired somebody to lip sync um, his songs and sell the records. So I just feel like the trauma of them basically taking his voice as a kid really affected him as an adult. The ending I really, really enjoyed as well. I feel like Memo really got his moment there. Up next is The King of Staten Island. And that movie was actually really, really good, you guys. I was very uh, shocked and surprised at how much I enjoyed the movie. Um, it stars uh, Pete Davidson. I haven't decided if it fits one of my top 10 of the year. I've lingered a lot with these other movies, you guys. So we're gonna just keep it going. But The King of Staten Island, it, it is on uh, demand. I think that's the only one on my list that you actually do have to uh uh rent was like oh becky becky was you have to rent that one as well but that one is not as expensive it's not the 20 dollars. becky was i think like seven or eight dollars but totally worth it you guys final thing on my list is uh wasp network that one also was uh forgettable or, or you tried i'm gonna say forgettable because i really don't remember what it's about I was totally lost. I don't get the movie. Um, it felt too long. The cast, though, the cast was amazing. It has Penelope Cruz, um, Ana de Armas, Edgar Ramirez, um, Gael Garcia Bernal, which he is looking a little bit older these days, or might just be the makeup that he had on, but I think he's just still so he's just so handsome this one is based on a true story that took place in the 1990s uh, about some, uh, about cuba and castro and coming to miami and like spies and espionage i feel like it was just all over the place to be honest with you it was really hard to keep track and then we had like two we had like two I'm trying to think about it, you guys. Again, it's very forgettable. We have like two personal, like family stories, and then we kind of go into their like friendship stories or whatever they're going on here, and then the, the bigger stuff that's going. I don't know, you guys. I I don't know. I didn't get it, and I kept stopping it. I couldn't even watch it straight through. I don't know what the movie really is about. I really don't. I don't want to rewatch it. Um, it's two hours and something minutes long. It was way too long, in my opinion yeah you guys so these are the 11 movies that i saw in the month of june um did you watch any of the movies that i saw how will you rank them what did you guys watch in the month of june how many movies did you watch i just still can't believe i saw 11 movies to be honest with you i'm very very shocked i cannot believe this you guys i actually have a movie in each little category that i don't think has ever actually happened before <laughs> of course don't forget to give this video a like subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet and don't forget to hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time that i post something new and until next time i'll see you guys at concessions bye